What is up all you minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at some trade paperbacks from Marvel Comics. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Before we get started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these trade paperbacks. These books are due out in the direct market on January 13th, so that's places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, your local comic book shop, in stock trades, Tales of Wonder, and then a couple of weeks later in the direct market. And I lied, they're not all trade paperbacks because this is the Fantastic Four 2021 calendar. This is a free calendar that you can get from your local comic book shop. So let's take a look at this first. So here is the 2021 calendar. It is the dimensions of a comic book. However, it does not read like a comic book. Well, maybe the first few pages do. Um, but this is an advertisement for King in Black, the Reign of X coming out. And then we get to the actual calendar. So here we are, the month of January. And each month features a cover, a classic cover from the Fantastic Four. And I say classic because I think every one of these people will know. Like, well, here, we'll skip a few so you're surprised to see what month you have or what cover you have on your birthday. But see, for example, we're getting into August and we have the classic new Fantastic Four. This is the actually the wrap-up of the Walter Simonson and Arthur Adams collaboration. And I think for December... We have the new Dan Slot run. This is the variant cover, if I'm not mistaken, of Fantastic Four by Mark Brooks. It's a beautiful cover, and this is what the calendar looks like. This is the one that's going to be hung up at my house. We only have one calendar in this whole house, so this is the one this year. And in the back is the advertisement for King and Black. Like I mentioned, this is available at your local comic book stores. The very first collection we're going to be looking at is Black Cat. And I will be holding up all these spines together later on so you can see what they all look like. And we have a cover on the front by Jeffrey Scott Campbell. And then on the back, it's also a Jeffrey Scott Campbell picture. The book retails for $15.99. Now, I think this ends up wrapping up a lot of the plot holes from the first two black cat trades so this is the third one this is called all dressed up it is all written by jed mckay uh the artwork in issues 11 and 12 are by cf villa and then the annual has joy vasquez natasha bustos and juan gedeon and then there's a free comic book day by patrick gleason so it doesn't really have a lot as a matter of fact this has 112 pages so just collecting black cat 11 and 12 annual number one and then the free comic book day special uh from 2020 the spider-man um spider-man venom that's what it was but only has just a little story of that but what i did want to do is showcase some of this artwork now granted this isn't foreman the artist on the first two books but this art is actually really good too and she is still on the run from the Thieves' Guild, and now she is being summoned to steal an armor from Tony Stark Enterprises. It gets kind of ridiculous, but I do want to showcase the badass artwork that's in here. So, I'm sure you can tell who is in that suit of armor and who is fighting Iron Man just from these pictures here. Or is she? Or could it be someone else in there? Or no one at all? Anyway, I will let you find out. It's been a fun book. This was a pretty fast read. Uh, let's look at the annual, because the annual has something fun in it. Censoring that final page of issue 12, but check out that annual. This is a cover by Jeffrey Scott Campbell, and it is the wedding of Black Cat and Spider-Man. But of course, not everything is as it seems. And just a few more pictures. And then we'll be looking at the back at some extras. But this is the artwork in here. It's very, actually, all of the artwork in Black Cat is very similar from the first two trade paperbacks all the way up until the annual. The only one really that stands out is the free comic book day one with the Vulture. And this is because it's drawn by Patrick Gleason. And Patrick Gleason had been drawing comic books for DC for years, and now he's over at Marvel. And he's, I think he is the main ongoing artist on Spider Man. And his art has always always kicked ass so i'm glad that he's doing a monthly series again let's look in the back here for some extras since it only has since it has issues 11 and 12 in the annual there's a bunch of extras so there's a lot of the variant covers are full splash pages so we have artwork by todd nog gerardo sandoval and then we have some character designs like the black cat iron armor 
sketches. And there's about 20 pages of extras back here. Again, the book retails for 15 Oh my gosh, that is crazy. That is pages 1 through 20. This is all the thumbnails by Joey Vasquez. Um, <laughs> what was I? Oh, uh, again, the book retails for $15.99 and has 112 pages. Next up is the classic Thor and the Eternals, The Celestial Saga. So this is the legendary saga from Roy Thomas, Ralph Macchio, and Mark Grunewald. And here's what the back looks like. This is a book, this is funny because some of you all reached out to me so I could ask David if they could make this into an epic collection because it's as thick as an epic collection and the price point is right at the epic line. However, they have already mapped out the epics, which is why they did not make this an epic. So here is Thor and the Eternals, the Celestial Saga, previously released as two trade paperbacks and of course previously released as single issues of Thor. So collecting issues 283 to 301 of Thor and kicking it off with annual number seven. Uh, this is after the Eternals first 19 issues uh, by Jack Kirby. And the whole premise of this is that Roy Thomas wanted to introduce the Eternals and the Celestials into the Marvel Universe. And in order to do that, they had to do a little bit of retconning. So Thor has this secret history with the Eternals, where he started to remember helping them out about a thousand years ago, and then uh, they defeated the third Celestial Host, and now the fourth one is coming, so his memory is restored. It was like somewhere in Mexico, I think, is where they ended up uh, fighting a thousand years ago. And then his memory is restored. So this is long before he was Donald Blake, uh, so he starts seeking answers from his father. Uh, from Odin. So that leads into a huge fight that leads into some secret origins of Odin. Uh, that leads into more eternal secret origins, including their ties to the very famous uh, nativity that happened in Bethlehem. I will leave you to find out exactly what that is. All the characters from Thor, like the Warriors 3, show up. There is a lot of fighting in these uh in this particular volume by the way like i mentioned it was previously released in these two trade paperbacks and these are long out of print but these were known as the eternal saga but the true name is the celestial saga this is probably regarded between the stan lee jack kirby and walter simonson thor run as the best thor story just uh, from people that love Thor, from people that enjoy reading Thor comics, this is regarded as the best. I know the people that I used to, um, when I worked at the comic book shop, they would tell me about this run. And I was like, ah, I don't know, I was never big into Thor. Yeah, it took, took me some time, but yeah, I eventually got into Thor big time. I was big into Thor because of Walter Simonson and then Tom DeFalco. And I really didn't want to go back and read some of this classic Shakespearean stuff because I had read some of the Silver Age stuff and I was like, you know... Just the dialogue is not for this guy. But, I don't know. Things change over time, right? You look at something that you used to look at a long time ago and you think about it differently. Whether it's better or whether it's worse than you remember, it all depends on where you are. Oh, by the way, one thing I did not mention is the annual is drawn, believe it or not, by Walter Simonson. This is early. This is long before he took over uh, Thor. Uh, long before he developed that very stylistic art style that he has that I love so much. The reason it looks like this, and you might think of Thor, or I mean, I'm sorry, Conan, it's because the inks are done by Ernie Chan, who I have grown to love because of reading those old Roy Thomas, Conan the Barbarian, the original Marvel Year books. And then we have John, Big John Buscema drawing uh, Thor at first, and then uh, you have Keith Polar joining. But it all looks very much the same, and that's either the inkers or the colorist. It all looks like the same artist was drawing it. It has a very uh, da -da, early 80s style to it, traditional comic book style to it. And this book, by the way, has 424 pages, and again, retails for $39.99. Yeah, this is the issue I was talking about, but I can't flip through here so you don't get spoiled but it goes all the way to 301 now Roy Thomas doesn't finish out the story um, I believe it's Ralph Macchio and Mark Grunewald step in to wrap up a lot of the loose ends now in the back I just want to showcase Keith Pollard's artwork again that's awesome all right let's look at the extras so you have editorial by Mark Grunewald 
And then you have, this is what I was showing earlier, the Eternal Saga Volume 1. This is the uh, front cover and then the back cover. And then Volume 2. By now, you all know what time it is. It is spine watching time. And also a time to remind you to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Or just pause it and put it on mute. The Eternals, the Dreaming Celestial Saga. Everything's a saga. As a matter of fact, the last book I'm going to be looking at is called The Saga. But that wasn't the original title. So the stories in here are mostly written by uh, Peter Gillis. And then Walter Simonson took over the run. And this is the stuff that was collected in the omnibus so all of this in here was added to the omnibus to make it into that newly expanded omnibus that just recently came out in december so yes peter gillis walter simonson uh big 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 you know what he is just as big as his brother sal busema there's an introduction here by peter gillis from 2019 if i think yeah and then it all kicks off with the what if issues so this collects those backup what if which is really rare because all the what if backups did was told the story of the Eternals, the Deviants, and the Celestials. So collecting um, the What If backups, 23 to 30, and then the 1985 series of the Eternals, 1 through 12, which is a maxi series, and then Iron Man Annual number 6. Oh, it also collects uh, Avengers 246 through 248. So this pretty much serves, like I mentioned, the backups as a retelling of the origin of the human race, the deviants, and the Eternals, and then the Celestials, where it all began, all told through the character of the Watcher. Uh, Mark Grunewald originally wrote a lot of this stuff, and then eventually it was uh, Peter Gillis. And it's, oh yeah, it ties to the Inhumans, ties to the Kree, all of that is in here. But let's get to the main series after, oh, first there's the annual. So Thor, the Celestial Saga, the purpose of that was to bring the Eternals, Jack Kirby's Eternals, into the Marvel continuity, into the Marvel Universe. So slowly we started seeing more and more of these characters appear in the Marvel Universe. So in the Thor annual you have... Oh, here's this page I wanted to show. So here are some of the Eternals that show up in this annual. Now, I have did an overview of the Monster Size and the Eternals Omnibus. Uh, in case you're wondering who they are and where they came from, what the origin is, if you want to go back and watch that. Uh, this book is a follow-up to that series. So here they appear through the pages of the Avengers. And of course, some of them have already been living their everyday life, like Cersei. Uh, and here. This is the To Save the Eternals issue. But this is what I wanted to get to. This is the 12-issue maxi-series of the Eternals that came out in 1985. Five. And this was to bring back the Eternals into the Marvel Universe. You see um, all these characters. And the way they do that is by introducing a new villain. So the Deviants have a priest, a villain priest named Gaur. Gawaur, I believe that's his name, or how you may pronounce it. Doesn't matter. The guy's a Deviant. So Gaur has found out that there is a Renegade Celestial, and he wants to possess this Renegade Celestial to get all his powers, and that's how he's going to take over the world. And of course, the Eternals find out about this plan, and they try to stop him. That's what pretty much this 12-issue series is about. And again, this was collected in the Eternals Omnibus, so if you have that, you know, no need to double dip and get this, but if you're getting these in trade paperbacks, then it's an excellent way to collect these books and let's look in the back here for some extras well i can't show that last page even if i try to censor it something uh there's a big spoiler back there now this book is almost 500 pages and retails for 39 dollars 99 it's 496 pages here's some of the original art pages and then the back now of course gower is not that color i think he's blue throughout the comic i think in the in the cover he is just drawn with the color green. Next up is the Marvelverse Captain Marvel book. Now, I've done overviews of these little graphic novel books, and they're a lot smaller, not a lot, but they are smaller than your trade paperbacks. Obviously smaller than your epic collections, of course. But just to do a little size comparison, this is what they look like. Of course, the price is a little bit different. This is $9.99, and then we're looking at an epic here of $39.99. So the purpose of these little graphic novel books from the Marvel verse line is that these collect classic stories from these characters and showcases the stories that Marvel 
thinks best represents the characters and also shows their origin. So what we have here for Captain Marvel is her first appearance of Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel. Not the first appearance of Carol Danvers, not her appearance as Miss Marvel or Binary or Warbird, but as Captain Marvel. And that's through the pages of Avenging Spider-Man number 9 and 10. And then there's also the Captain Marvel series from 2014, issues 7 through 8 collected in here. And then the Generations Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel one shot from 2017. I think it was part of the Legacy line, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is all drawn by Terry Dotson, the two issues there. And that serves as the, hey, Carol Danvers is now Captain Marvel. And then we move on to the ongoing series. And I think this is more of an origin of Chewie, her cat, and the secrets that Chewie has. And there's a little team up here with Rocket Raccoon. And the artwork here is all done by Marcio Takara. And then we get to the one shot. This one here is written by Margaret Stoll and drawn by Brent Schoonover. So it's a team up of Captain Marvel with the original Captain Marvel, who's been dead for a long time. How they're teaming up? Well, I will leave it to you or your kids to figure that out. Um, as far as the, I think there might be extras. Let's see. Okay, there's one extra in the back and that's the variant cover to the generations. 112 pages, $9.99. And I forgot to mention that Kelly Sue the Conic is the writer on the first two stories. Last, but certainly not least, is Vision and the Scarlet Witch, the saga of Wanda and Vision. We have this beautiful Alex Ross cover here. Here's what the spine looks like. And then the back. The book retails for $39.99. Now, before I talk about it, I do need to mention that it is the dimensions, the price point, and the thickness of an epic collection. So why isn't this an epic? I'm sh that's a question I've been getting. Why did they decide to do the Saga book? Because I think since it's a maxi series of 12 issues collected in here. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the content first. So this collects Giant Size Avengers uh, number four, which is the wedding of Vision and Scarlet Witch. Spoilers, but I'm sorry, that's on the cover. And I'm pretty sure most of you all know uh, by now. And then it collects the four issue miniseries by Bill Mantlo from 1982. And then Vision and Scarlet Witch one through 12, as well as the crossover with West Coast Avengers number two. Now, issues one and two of that ongoing, or the Maxi series and West Coast Avengers 2 was in the first um, Avengers West Coast epic collection. Damn, that gets confusing. Sorry. West Coast Avengers was the original title of Avengers West Coast. Later on, when John Byrne, during John Byrne's run of the book, they decided to change it to Avengers West Coast. But to me, for some reason as a kid, I will always call it West Coast Avengers. So this is where it all kicks off um, with the giant size annual and how Vision and Scarlet Witch just kind of get married at the end where he was like, hey, you want to marry me? And she's like, yeah, cool. Then we go into the Vision and Scarlet Witch. This is by Bill Mantlo and Rick Leonardi is the artist on this. This is the four issue miniseries. And the book has 472 pages. Now, I do think that the four-issue miniseries will be collected in the epic uh, books, just like the first two issues of the ongoing series and the Giant Size Annual. I don't think the rest of the series, uh, issues 3 through 12, are going to be collected because it's literally character-centric. It's about the Vision and Scarlet Witch. And let me show you. Okay, but before I show you, issue 4 of the miniseries is really important and I, I i hate that i can't talk about these things because of spoilers but i know some of you all get upset because you've not read this and you want to know but it is an important issue to the origin of not just scarlet witch but also quicksilver now let's go to the main series so this kind of gives you a quick little recap about the eternal computer invading the vision's brain and helping him create the west coast avengers and then peter gyrick asking them what's going on and then pretty much just wanda and vision saying you know what we quit we no longer want to be avengers we want to live our life in the suburbs and of course that's what the 12 issues are this was unheard of at the time just two characters that were superheroes living in the suburbs. And of course, you have supervillains show up. Uh, this is the crossover with the Avengers West Coast or West Coast Avengers. And it's it's crazy because you have Halloween, you have Thanksgiving. So it's a year in the life of Wanda and Vision when they're married. And then the ending has a big 
big cl- uh, uh, something big happens at the very end of the book, and I'm not gonna reveal what happens, but it does affect comic books to this day. The ending of that twelfth issue. But this is what the artwork looks like. There's this Thanksgiving dinner where they invite family and friends. There's a huge fight. Toad comes in. Yeah, Toad has this ridiculous, like, robot outfit. He starts calling himself the strongest mutant or the most evilest mutant. Because he's always had a thing for Scarlet Witch. Ever since they were in the days of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Luke Cage shows up. Spider-Man shows up. So even though they're living in the suburbs and trying to adapt a life like that... It, they can't get away from superheroes. Now, let's look in the back here for extras. Okay, so here are some extra pages here from Foom number six. Um, and then some house ads. By the way, I don't think that this is going to be collected in any of the epics. And that's why this is an epic type of book known as the saga. That's my thing. That's that's my way of understanding this. Here are some, I think these are unused covers. There's a couple of these by Richard Howe, who is the ongoing artist in the book. Let's look at another one. Now, this has been released before in Vision and Scarlet Witch trade paperbacks, A Year in the Life uh, trade paperback. Here's the West Coast Avengers cover, an unused cover to issue number 11, and then a pinup by David Mack. But that, as they say, is that. If you want to purchase any of these books, check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and page count of each of these books. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you're picking up. If you got your free Fantastic Four 2021 calendar, if you're enjoying the Eternal Saga, if you've been getting them in trade paperback, or if you got the Omnibus, if you have the original Thor trades of Thor, the Celestial Saga... And what you think about this new kind of semi-epic trade format, which is known as the saga, this one in particular, the saga of Wanda and Vision. Let me know all those comments down below. Please, if you have any more questions, leave those questions down below. I will get to them, I promise. And more importantly, please, all of you, stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.